Hello everyone, welcome to another week in our beautiful sunny garden. Really is nice today, very very close. Now we're going to start this week, we're going to harvest the calibrese. Now it's beginning to show a little bit of yellow on the tops, that's the flowers coming. So we nearly need to get it cut, get it up, get it blanched and get it frozen. Okay. Right. Here's the calibrese, as you can see, it's just starting to throw a little bit of colour on top. So now we'll harvest them. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut the top of the calibrese off, the flowers if you like, and leave the rest. And there's every chance they'll throw another head or two around the edge and then we'll harvest again. It's just a case of going under and just cutting up like that that's how I'm going to leave them and there's the heads we want so we'll get harvested them all out and show you them done I'll just show you that if you can see where the knife is now there's a little head coming up there'll be one of those popping out of every joint or every leaf joint if we leave them they'll come up as long as it stays reasonably cool they'll be fine that's the calibrese harvested. We'll have these up, get them blanched and get them frozen down. Now that's the calibrese harvested. We'll move up a little bit and I've some leeks I want to put in. I should put them in with the bulb planter and I'll show you how I do it. And then we need to get to plot A and get those squashes and pumpkins put into circles. They're going crazy. Okay. As you can see I've started putting the leeks in and I use the bulb planter and I'll show you how I do it and then I just drop them in, give them a drink and apart from keeping them weeded, keeping an eye on them for rust and mildew, that's it. So what I do, I go from about the centre of the hole, make a scuff with the head, with the handle should I say. And I put that on and twist it in. Now, if your ground's like this ground, is a bit hard, and you find it hard to push in, if you just give it a wobble and then carry on a bit, and when it tightens up again, it just makes it so you can get it down easier. And just pull it out. And then I always empty mine. But you can see, there's plenty of manure and everything in there, good compost in there. And the soil at what, six inches deep, is very, very wet still. So although it looks very dry on the top and it's cracking, there is the moisture down there for the plant. So anything that's well growing and well rooted, there's no need to water yet. Same again, centre of the hole, Make a mark with the handle and that's where we'll go down there. If it's tight, remember, just give it a wobble round and then it'll go in. I go all the way down to about six inches, but if you can only get three or four, that'll have to do. And then I empty each one so I can have a good look at what's coming out of the soil as well. That's very good, very moist at the bottom. Right, so do one there and one there and then we'll drop plants in. It's just a double row of leeks. They'll be a bit tight together, but they'll be easy to harvest at that. We'll take this row first as younger ones. Here it's gone quite easy. And then you can see it's good soil down there. That's where the roots will be, so that's okay. One more then. About here, centre of those two in a way a bit. Again, it's tight, so I'll wobble it. And that's it, look, a good hole. And then 
I just take that sword away. I'm actually putting the sword in amongst the leeks, uh, the onions. Uh, right, having made the holes, we use the leeks. These have been grown in cells. The varieties are Sultan and Below Zero. They're both hybrids and we'll have to find somewhere else where we might need some if not we'll give the rest away okay get them out you just pop your finger underneath and they just pop out i'm going to actually just pop and pull and then it's just a case of dropping them in I wish all the plants were as easy as this to put in. We'll not have that one, we'll have a bigger one. A little bit selective. Don't need the labels. Then once once they're in the holes, just dropped in like that, then I just water them in. I've done all those up there, it's just a case of and just enough soil or washing with the water in. To get them going I should do this for two or three days and then leave them then to get on with it that's now two rows of leeks in no problem right now we'll go on to the squash and the pumpkin bed and get these circles started now to pin these pumpkins and squashes down into the circles I've made some wire hooks and what I'm going to do is feed a bit of bright yellow hose pipe on it it was a bit of hose pipe we had left over in the shed so at the end of the season when we take the crop up and clean up they'll be quite easy to find with them being bright yellow so that's what we'll hold them down with I made about 20 so, but enough to start this. Now, to make the circle, these three plants here are all the same. They are actually a pumpkin called Rocket. So it'll be more of an oval, what they're in, than a circle. They're already showing fruit, so we just need now to contain them and look after them. The, that's a female flower, two female flowers there, look, with the pumpkin behind what you'll find is if you don't move them sharpest they will root down so if you get them into circles and get them going they will root themselves into the circle as well so there's three here look there's three runners running there look so puff them up put them all together and we'll just put the That's a lot better than a piece of wire, so you can't find it. Other one's shooting out over here, so we'll bring that in. We'll make sure it's running that way. I'm just moving the fruit away from the stems because they'll scratch the fruit else they will. This one's coming along and it's actually trying to get into the with the lettuce look it's actually turned its head and you can see how they grab things and pull themselves along but we need to now take it round to that one so then we'll pick up them both so we'll just turn it and what I'm going to do and we'll pop a pin in there one in this end as well because it will the wind etc will blow it round now as we've came through as you can see that one is coming this way nicely so that's all right this one's going the wrong way and that one is trying to get into the fruit cage so we'll bring these two round we'll put a clip on this one just to make sure it's secure is there and it'll probably root down there as well there you are you see and then I should pull these two round and then bring it round to meet this one so that's the it's more of an oval this one than a circle see this look that's just cut across if you don't you'll never know where they are so 
what we'll do. We'll find out where they are. Look, here it is. It hasn't rooted down, so we're all right. We'll bring it round. We'll bring this one to it as well. Be careful with them because it will break easy at this stage and you could easily knock your fruits off and then we'll just drop that in and that's fine. As you can see I've given plenty of room there so you can pin more than one down with them. Lots of room, they'll be okay. And also if you're trying to water the root now you'll probably not find it with all this foliage coming so that's where these bottles will come into their own. Then I can just water into there and I know it's going to the root. Right we'll pick them up. There's one there going the wrong way look so we'll take him round as well. Take it right round and we'll pin it there because if you don't if you don't it'll nip across and be up the frame right so that's those three this is the only piece we've got where there is three plants in it but only we've got three pumpkins so we had to put them in where it's more of a an oval than a circle but they will now be kept going around you can always lift the pin up a little bit, push them under and push the pin down, there's plenty of room under them. And that's the first of many, we'll do that one over there now and show you that one then. I think these are brilliant because it saves me an awful lot of time and throwing water everywhere when you know that a litre of water in there every day will keep that plant going beautifully. The next two, I'll just look at this name for you, these are I think these are two golden hubbard here but what as you can see the foliage is beginning to take over the bottle now so we'll pop another bottle on while we're here just make life easier I think we'll actually finish up with four bottles on each. Now we'll take the clips. As you see, it's showing fruit already. So it's happy, it's growing, and it's doing fine, and off it goes. If you left them, they'll go straight through that lettuce over there. So what we do, very carefully, hutch them in. Try and keep them away from your fruits. Try and put your fruits a little bit out of the way if you can it's not always possible and then just pop the hook in and they'll grow quite happily through there now and you'll find that where where these tendrils are growing you'll find that that's where it'll root down as well so once they're rooted down they look after the cells now this is the other one, so to bring the circle round they need to be here somewhere so they go back. As you see it's showing a bit of fruit, there's also a weed or two in there to take out while we're here. That's the weed taken care of, now we can get on with taking it round. So we're coming round and we'll go that way round and back in. So here we go, look, we'll put the pin just here. Just take it down to the soil level. That's fine there, look, that'll do a good job. Now these two are, that one's doing its job properly, it's already coming across. These are the snowman. So we'll just pop him and pop one on, just ready for when that other one comes round. We'll make a circle there out of those. These are the blue squash, I can't see the name, it's faded. They're the blue ones, but they're not quite doing so well over here. When they're ready, we'll get them as they start to circle there. Now we're uh, inside the arch. There's quite a wind getting up now, though it is warm. And we'll just show you that these squashes here, and well, both sides really, are beginning to latch on to 
the frame. What I'm finding is because we put this square mesh on both sides, if you keep the plant between the two meshes, it tends to latch on itself and go soon gets going. This one's really climbing up look. But just keep them between and then they do the job the south. This side is just beginning, this one's just coming up now look. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see where it's just beginning to come up now? So we need just to, well, I can't do it this one, I'll put a tie on it look. I'm going to tie it. Just put a loose tie on, just hold it that in that direction. Not too tight, don't, uh, don't strangle it. It'll latch on itself like this and once they're on, they're away and they're no problem at all. You might have to just pull the odd head back in and put it between the two meshes just to keep it going. Right, while we're here, we'll nip into the fruit cage and we can pick some fruit for our pudding after dinner tonight. That would be nice. Right, we're at the strawberries. There's a few to pick, a lot better now we sprayed them with the baking soda and we thinned them out a little and the air's been getting to them so there's not there's still a few mouldy ones in there but nothing like what there was. So we'll harvest a few for tea but this year we're going to have to live with and take those off and put them onto the incinerator. The rest look alright no? So we'll take that one away. That one's fine, look, you see, so there is quite a few in there. But remember, there was under a foot of water, so they haven't done too bad. We'll go through them and we'll pick a few and show you. Show you them pick. When, when you're picking them, is have a little bit of stalk. Don't pull them off with no, no green. It doesn't look right, that looks nice. I'll just go through the big one there. I'll have that one. And just try and pick just the bright red ones if you can. Finish picking a few and then I'll come back to you and then we'll look at the raspberries. Uh, I've had to fetch another basket to put the strawberries in because there's more there than I thought. So that's not bad for a first pick over. With the conditions that they've had, they've done very well. There's uh, a few of the raspberries ready, so now we'll pick those as well while we're here, okay? Uh, here's the raspberries. You can see that they are really, really ready. If you just touch them, they're coming away. Perfect. Look at that. We'll continue picking what we've got ready and then we'll show you what we've got. Right, there's a few of the raspberries now. There's not many there but we've only got four plants and remember these plants are six months old, seven months now. That's very, very good for that. Imagine what we'll get next year at this time. Now, I notice there's a few red currants ready. So we'll take those and fill the rest of this tray with red currants. Now, as you can see, there's some, there's some berries ready. Uh, some are not quite ready yet, but we'll take the ones that are ready because they look beautiful. Just have a taster. Yes, I've done the taste, the taste test, and absolutely beautiful. So we'll have what we can. It's getting hard to get true red ones because they're plenty early, you know. Now there's uh, a few berries there that'll do us nicely for for today. I was trying to get Diane to test the gooseberries, but she won't. 
I got her on that last year. <laughs> now we've got a few strawberries, a few raspberries, we've got the calibris, we've put the leeks in and it's getting a bit late in the afternoon now so we'll call it a day today and tomorrow we'll get on that crazy vine and get that sorted. Hello there, now we're at the shed under the crazy vine and we're going to have to try and tame it a little bit. I have done from that side to here and that was a big piled up wheelbarrow full. Now I need to get this end done. I left it so we can do it with you. So you'll be able to see how I cut my grapevine. Although I do think I could have done it with the edge trimmer this year. As you can see it's it's really put some growth on so we've got to cut that back we'll try if we can to cut it back to two two buds on each stem what might have to do is cut it now and then cut it again later when we can see a bit better in there this stem as you can see there's two lots of fruiting buds on it but i'm going to count it as one two and take it off there else that will shoot again and we'll be even more on it just a case of following it through and taking them off. So here you see there's one, two, so we'll just snip it off there. What you will find is another shoot will come out of there anyway. Same again, look. One, two, so there is fruit there, so we'll take that off and that bit of a bud. You'll be able to see what we're doing in a second or two, but you can see there's another shoot coming on there already. There is another bunch of grapes forming there, but we'll, I, we'll call that one the one we want else. If you don't, we'll never get in control of it. Let's take these off now, look. They're a bit tight up here. There we go, one, two. Now there's no grapes on this one look, forming at all, so we'll go one, two and cut off. We're not looking for grapes on that one. This one, got two bunches there. So we've got one, two, and we'll cut off there. This one we'll lose. This one, one, two. There's a good bunch there. We'll take it off there, look, because this one's coming as well. And we get through it, I'll keep going. Look at this one here, huge, huge amount of growth on it and there's no, there's no fruit on it so we're going to go there, take that one out and we can see what we're doing a bit better. Then. Again, one, two, let's take it there. There is fruit look but you can't keep every single one. This one, one, two, I don't know if you can see it, but we'll take it there and there's a little shoot. Now this corner is right tangled up, so we've got to sort this out. There's those fruit in there, then there's another one fruit in there. So let's take that one. You can see the fruits are beginning to set. We could do with some warm weather on them really. There we go, one, two. So there's two there, look, let's we'll keep that. No we won't, we'll take it off there. If we get too con if, if we don't cut it quite hard here, it grows all over the shed. So if we have to lose a few grapes then we lose them. This one, all that left come off, look, we'll take it off there. And this one, see all those grapes are set in there, look. So I think the best thing to do with this one is take it off. And perhaps not there. Yeah, we'll take it off there. There you go. And you can see this one's beginning to shoot away, so we'll take that one off over here. All this here that's hanging down onto the shed will all have to come off. So we'll, what we'll do, 
we'll just follow it up until we've got a couple of grapes hanging on it, like a couple, and then we'll have to let that one go. Let's go there on that one. I'll have to cut them together because they're all tangled at the top. Same again this one. There are some grapes forming, but we're going to lose some. Let's go there so we can see what we're doing. It's beginning to look something like now. This, we'll take that off. It's still very, very tangled and a bit messy, but it's a good start. And then we'll see what fruit develops and then we'll cut back again. There's far too much fruit there. They'll have to be thinned down if they set. This end will do the same. I'll cut my way in and then I'll cut my way across. You've got to leave some of your grapes on, but not too many, I don't think. It's, it's just going too, too crazy. That one. I'll take that one. I'll leave that one on that one. No grapes on that one that can come off. Likewise. There's some on that one so I'll let those run. A few on that one so we'll just take the top out. These are the shoots that have actually shot away over the last few days. There's no grapes on them so we'll take them out and slow it down a bit. Good example there, look, we're going to have to take it off there, else it'll be far too big. When the grapes are hanging, it'll be far too heavy anyway. This one, we'll go oh, just above those grapes, look, we'll take both of those off. These without grapes on, we cut quite hard back. Okay. And we start here again. Let's cut that. We'll cut it there. A good pair of sharp secateurs for the great ones to get. Uh, that one's got grapes in there. That one comes on. This one got no grapes on it at all, look, so we'll take that off down there just to thin it out a little. And then that energy will not be wasted in that one, but to put towards filling the grapes up. These two here. A bit spindly ones look but they'll really grow take off now we've reduced it so they have to come off as well another one here look grapes go to there so we'll take it off there that one the same this one look there's no grapes on that one at all so i'm going to cut right down here off. When I'm cutting quite hard like this, I always think to myself, well, we'll give it one, one, one spare, and we'll take that off. So if that fails, then that one will take over. So remember, one, two, and cut. One, two, and that's got a little bit of grape coming there, so we'll let that come for now. And in here, what they'll do you get these tendrils on as they grow and it really does make it a mat if you're not careful and then you really have to cut your way through it it sounds like the chickens are all shouting to one another that's rodney he's got the loudest voice i think there we go That looks a lot better now. It's really, really taking it down. It's tidied it up. That's it all done now. The vine can put its energy into the fruits rather than putting a lot of growth on. 
Now, you know I have problems when the grapes are ripening with the starlings and the wasps and I usually put a big sheet all around it. Now, Diane has found these on Amazon. Uh, when the grapes are hanging and they're ripening, you just put this bag on them. It's got a little bit of a wire tape on it, so you pop it over your grapes and then put that round and that protects the grapes from the insects and the birds but it will let them ripen if you're interested in them they were from Amazon but they have to come from China so they take quite a time to get here so if you want them to put on your grapes your melons anything that's outdoors that you need to protect from the birds and the pests and you can pop this little bag on do it up and reading the instructions at the end of the season you can give them a wash and put them away and use them for next year as well we actually bought a hundred so we'll have quite a few hopefully we get enough grapes to put them all on but they're very useful it saves me doing all this hanging the mesh on and everything useful tip now that'll be it for today i've got quite a bit of mess to tidy up and i've got to clean the chickens out hello there and good afternoon friday today hardly a cloud in the sky it's absolutely beautiful birds are singing the chickens will probably start in a minute as well now today we're just going to harvest some salads that we need for the weekend we'll take two lettuce and um, probably two cucumbers so let's lift these lettuce we're going to have one red and one green if you like i'll cut it at the soil if i can or if i pull it out or if i pulled it out that's a lovely red lettuce isn't it let's take the green one as well again i'll just pull it out if i can that's it here we are nice nice lettuce very crispy right we'll just cut a cucumber we were having two but the one we've seen is very large so we'll just have the one i think this is the one i'm going to take it's rather large there are more oops yeah we'll take this one before it gets too big else it will snap off just a straight little cut there you go that's lovely isn't it that's a nice cucumber i like that tastes good too i don't know if you can see but there's let me take that leaf off it won't mind there you go you can see them now can you see where these are caught in the mesh and they're actually making the cucumber curl so what we'll have to do is just free that a little bit if we can just let it turn down another one here look just let make sure they're not caught in the mesh that one will have to go on the other side of the mesh they'll straighten themselves up then but they are cropping very very well now people have asked me what i'm feeding the tomatoes and the cucumber with this is what I'm using for the tomatoes and the cucumber and the melons. I just feed it once a week on a Monday. It's from Green Future. Good feed, very, very thick. That's a nice little harvest for a walk up the garden. Now, don't forget to keep watering in this dry weather. Remember, a good watering every other day is better than a little bit every day. It's just going to dry up anyway. Give them a good water, leave them a few days, they'll do better, don't they? Right, so that'll be about it for this week. Thank you for watching. Thank you again for subscribing. We do appreciate it. And hopefully, if it doesn't rain, we'll see you next week in the sunshine. Bye for now.